technology is changing the real estate industry. Yes. How is real estate evolving with technology and like where we're going from here? And like, is it the end of an era in real estate? And that's really the hot topic. I see more and more people uh, are receding to technology. Obviously, there's lawsuits. What's going on? How is this going to impact the business of real estate moving forward? What we're doing, uh, what we've done, what we're doing into the new year. And we have some really, we've really done a lot. This year, we've, done, we've, made, we've made significant strides. And we'll get into our strides because it's fun. That's the fun part of the business is we're making significant strides across many platforms. And so we're, we're going to be on uh, two live platforms and then YouTube will be on later. Yes. We're not doing YouTube live. It's just too many lives. That's the one thing technology wise we haven't streamlined is yeah. getting everything into a single. Yeah. There are, there are, there are things out there, but yeah. I heard it just, uh, it's just, a, a, you know, it's been one of the challenges. They, most platforms don't like when you stream live from a single spot mm. because the comment sections don't necessarily um, yeah. coincide with everything, but it is becoming more mainstream and we're going to get some insights from you guys because one of the things we'd like to know is what's going on with you guys in terms of where the business is headed, where you're going from here, what's going to happen to your business. Yeah. What's going to happen to you as a homeowner? Because that's changing too. Um, and all that kind of fun stuff. And there's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and how you guys are actually, how people are changing the way they're, they're using the internet with artificial intelligence. Uh, there's so much to get into. It's actually a fun uh, discussion. Uh, for some people, it's a dire discussion that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Because I think going into the new year, um, you're going to question a lot of things about where your business or where the business is going, how to address those concerns, how we've addressed them. So we just drew a lot of questions out there. I'm going to get to each one of these individually yes. and see what's going on uh, with the world of technology, media, and the internet. What's going on? So let's get into it, Carrie. Well, let's get into it. So... Um... The first thing I would like to ask you is what is going on with the Zillow and Realtor merge? Okay. Realtor.com. Yeah, I just read this today. So this is one of the interesting topics. Realtor and Realtor.com, which used to be owned by the National Association of Realtors, mm -hmm. was sold off in 2016. Um, and Zillow.com came up with an enhanced listing platform. So it hasn't merged in the full sense, but they've agreed to this piece of it, which is enhanced listings. Mm -hmm. So again, as the real estate business has always gotten itself into giving up stuff, it's lost its ground and it's going to continue to do so. This is just a further push in that direction. Less control, less... Uh, unless you're doing a lot of other things. Unfortunately, we, we don't have to worry about that here. Um, so what it is is now like in order to get your listing placed in certain places on the platforms, you have to pay more mm. to do so. Oh, okay. So again, expect cost to run. But my thing is, is that, and there's, there's ways around this because I tell people all this all, this all the time. It's like, what would happen uh, if you didn't do it and what was the hedges against it. So let's get into that because, um, I think that's one of the things that I truly believe is going to shape the, um, shape the industry going forward, uh, how we respond to it. Unfortunately, we have responded to it. And if you haven't checked out um, before I even go too long, I'd like to, and like I said, we're on multiple platforms here. Um, check out our YouTube channel. Obviously, we'd like you to subscribe if you're on these other platforms as well, which is Facebook down there, TikTok over here. Um, so YouTube, we have almost that 2,000 subscribers. We're one of the regions 
we're becoming the regions. We're right in the top. I think we were like, we're in like the top 5% of all real estate companies within like three states, which is an amazing accomplishment. And we're really bustling. I mean, we're, we're upwards of now, we're coming like close to 22,000 people a month. Mm -hmm. No, it's crazy. On it's that, YouTube, YouTube is 22,000. We're, we're a million on each of these formats, across all the formats. We're over a million now. But now we're, who, next year we talk about 2.5 million, yeah. right? We just got to the million mark this, this we about two months ago, three months ago, yeah. four months ago, about four months ago, we got to the million mark. Now we're on to 2 million. And as time has gone on, we've kind of, it's kind of accelerated itself. So it's now it's like, now the wheels are really starting to go. And that's, that's an interesting, that's an interesting part about how we're adjusting to what's going on in real estate. Because I think at the end of the day, um, it's changing and where we, we have to make the adjustment. So the merge between the two to get, I always <laughs> got completely out of line with that. Uh, but the, to get back to the question, I have a habit of doing this. Yeah. I, I've been monitoring myself, uh, it's just to ramble. Um, yeah, so the, 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 the real question is gonna, it's likely going to take, uh, more of the agents percentage of the revenue uh just to get housing get their home exposed and it'll be coming at an increasing cost so it'll be like bidding you'll literally bid to have your house placed higher in in the in the hierarchy it's if you're not doing the, the there's some companies that are good at it there's some companies that are not but i think at the end of the day um if you're not doing a few things this, the business is going to consistently squeeze, squeeze, squeeze profitability margins, which have been hurt this year already. So you're going to have to pay to be exposed. Uh, yeah. That's not, More? That's fun. Yeah. No, it's not fun. It's, not, <laughs> it's definitely not fun when you see when you when you see the checkbook every month. And it's not this is and then people think it's cheap. It's not cheap at all. It really it gets expensive. So anyway. Get on to that next question. What do we got? So um, something I would like to talk about is uh, YouTube team, like uh, videos being playing on TV now. Well, you do that, right? Yes, I do watch YouTube on TV. Yeah. Like you've been doing it for a while, right? Oh, yeah. Ever since I had my TV in my room. So the smart TV has been the, um, has been the, uh, the thing for you, I guess. Um, and we're talking a separation of two, two, two generations here. Yeah. Uh, I'm not Gen, I'm Gen X, you're Gen Z. Yeah. <laughs> we actually skipped the millennials. But the big thing is, um, yeah. So do you find, I mean, this is a question for you because I, I like to put you on the spot. Oh. Yeah, you know, I know how you, you Gen Zs love to talk a lot. So um, do you find yourself like, what percentage, like, I, YouTube is an app on the TVs, correct? Yes. So you go on, you go home. There's two sections for YouTube, right? There's the YouTube premium, which is like the YouTube, like the streaming service. Yes. And there's regular YouTube. Yeah. Do you find yourself going back and forth between the two of them or do you have the premium service? I do not have the premium service. So you just watch YouTube for YouTube? I just watch YouTube, yeah. She watches herself on YouTube. No, she doesn't. <laughs> she hates watching herself. It's one of those things. We try to play the videos in here. It doesn't work out too no. well. She, 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 she hates hearing a voice. A lot Why? Of do, though. No, no, no. Yes. I don't like. I don't know. Hearing I don't my know. voice. Do you guys like hearing a voice? No. Give a thumbs up if you if you like it. <laughs> no. Thumbs up if you like Carrie's voice. Really She'll sing. She sit. Listen, guys. I can tell you, she sings in the office. I'm going to have to get a recording of, of Carrie's best behind the desk uh, vocals uh, for like a. Uh, yeah, you sing a lot, actually. She hums, she sings. But uh, so that's. But so you use, um, obviously, you use YouTube on the TV set. And the interesting thing is that's where we've adapted most. So our biggest growth part of what we've done in the last year is starting to look at the wide format type 
the digital video marketing. Mm -hmm. And with the advent of certain products and things like that, we have basically, we have a, where we have New Jersey covered pretty good. Uh, we have a lot to do, yeah. but, um, what we're able to do now is reach audiences who may be prospectively looking at specific areas in New Jersey. Don't understand the state. You're not going to get that from a map of Zillow and how to get um, these tours and really get in depth as to what it's the more of the experience of living in these towns. And I think that's what's changing the most here is we're able to deliver this faster and faster uh due to the advent of like artificial intelligence and things like that mm -hmm. we are delivering products faster and faster and faster and then we continue to hone in and we've come a long way in a year just on the forefront of like um how uh things are kind of spoken about on, on our channels like oh, yeah. you can hear the quality difference of the advent of technology yeah, yeah. Would it, so do you, when you go through, so knowing this, I mean, for the people that don't watch, they should know from you because you're really what the future is going to hold for the industry. The fact that you've, you've been using YouTube on TV for a considerable amount of time, right? Since you said you've yeah. had a smart TV, you've been using it. So, yeah. it. so do you find yourself using it more on your phone at all? Or which, which, no. so you don't use YouTube on your phone much or at all? Um, no, I use it on my phone. I have it on my phone, but I prefer to watch it on. So TV. if you said to me the order of which you use media, mm -hmm. like let's start with from um, TikTok, Facebook, you don't use Facebook much. No, no. Facebook, <laughs> Facebook is for the posts for like the, like the adult part of you. Yeah. All the adults in the room. Yes. Which you my probably, family. yeah, like. <laughs> PG, then you go down to yeah. <laughs> PG 13 now, which is maybe a, a, well, a Snapchat. <laughs> Snapchat, I mean, it's, that's, it, that's never, it goes, it has its ebbs and flows. Yeah. Uh, it's not. It's definitely not a premium app. We had it for a little while. We stopped using yeah. it because it just was not, not, not worth the time investment that we're putting into it. Yeah. Um, but so what would you say you use on your phone the most instagram uh uh probably TikTok, and then instagram right so but you have said to me what's the preferred method you like i know you i, I know you use like percentage of difference between instagram and um you're not going to say it i told you you're not going to read know, comments I can't even read it. good um <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it was anything to read, but let's let's get into. Yes. Don't pay attention to that right now. We'll get if we could get to the question. We'll get to the question a little bit. So, what percentage of time? So, if you said to me, like, what's the preferred app that you use on your phone? Like, if I said right now, what's the first thing you're going to check? TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. And you think your generation specifically is TikTok driven? Yes. Okay. Then then Instagram. On a phone, yeah. Then, so you say TikTok, Instagram, and then no. Snapchat. <laughs> For our Snapchat, we don't have. But so do you, now, my thing is, is time. Let's talk about time for a second because it's important. Right. So, from a time perspective, on your phone, you prefer longer form content or shorter form. And if you want to watch something longer, do you use the smart TV? Uh, so definitely on my phone, I prefer longer, I mean, shorter content. Right. Yes. And then on my TV, like that's when I expect to like sit down, relax and watch something on YouTube, on YouTube. Yeah. So you say long form on YouTube is on the TV is considered to be the preferable way to yeah, do it. I mean, there's a larger screen, so there's like better quality, better right. audio like coming from that's a you know that's another thing audio is a big part of it right yeah. um so audio being um a big part of why the smart tv i think has taken off a lot in the last year or so because we just did, we just did a report for you okay yes. here's the stats on this okay youtube has grown 70 percent in one year on tvs 
a 70% growth of YouTube on TV. So YouTube has really quickly gone from, you know, your computer, which I think people are using less and less of. I really yeah. do think now with the, even with the advent of the screen being on the, the smart TV, where people would want to watch longer format, they may have used a, a PC. Yes. I now, don't use a computer anymore. Except for here. Except for here, but at home, I don't even touch my computer. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's so either. I, I don't yeah. think, I think most, 90% of what I do is on an iPad, yeah. which is interesting, um, interesting part. Uh, more you could, I, I don't know what that was, so. Um, you may want to ask that question again because it kind of passed us up. Yeah, I know. I, I'll look for it later. But so the big thing is, is you believe, so you believe that, uh, so you believe in the smart TV being relevant to long form content that okay. now could be made for local content. So it's like, everybody remember, you don't even remember this, but cable TV used to have like community, community TV. Now, uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook, um, we kind of left that off the, off the radar a little bit. Facebook, I don't, I don't know. Like, they, I mean, they keep trying to do things. It, Facebook has its moments and it doesn't. I, I can't really tell you from like the perspective. Yeah. Uh, understand, the, the one thing about like platforms that we use or, or want to know how to use better is most reliable stat we get is actually YouTube views. YouTube views are pure, meaning that before they're counted as views, they have to actually view for a period of time before it's counted. So like you see a lot of like counts like on your channel that will consistently move up or down mm -hmm. and it'd be like, oh, it's a thousand views. A thousand views could be someone just cascading through through the entire thing and it just so so somehow passes the screen. Yes. Until and they just, stop. Yeah. And that's counted as a view where YouTube is not like that. YouTube quantifies actual viewership, which is a little bit different uh, in terms of, I think what happens is, is that I think for advertisers purposes, that it's a more, um, more, more directed in terms of saying, you know, it's a view versus a, a pure view versus just a, uh, a passe type a passing through type view mm -hmm. and that's a big difference engagement levels are really the, where youtube kind of differs in that respect yeah. so let's get on to the next thing that's where we are 70 percent growth in youtube views yeah. up on tv I mean, I and it continues to grow um I and i think uh yeah it says which platform is trapped as uh ranks the top choice with generation z your generation is the top 35% Gen Z, 33% of millennials, even Gen X and boomers are 29%. Yeah, that's, that's a big number. So, they're, they're, so even uh, older generations are using the smart TV for the purposes of, you, uh, of consuming media mm -hmm. or digital media. And why that's important for real estate, we're going to get to that at some point. But where there's an angle to this, if you don't know. It's an angle to why we're doing it this way. Yes, yes. So, we, so what's up with the next one? So the next is that um, our marketing here, mm -hmm. um, how selling with the marketing that we do and well, changes, well, we, yeah. has changed over a year. The marketing has changed substantially over the year. Yes. The, the ability, okay, so when we talk about from a year ago to today, one of the most significant advantages we've made as a company is the use of artificial intelligence. There's no doubt about it. Artificial intelligence has changed. It's a game changer for us. Oh, yes. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's a part of this office. Do you find, like, we've had AI downs, where the AI is down. Oh, my God, yeah. And we have such a, we, we really become not just, it's not even so much anymore that we're, like, it's down. We could just cut. We're like almost dependent on it. <laughs> no, we are. It's like there's a dependency. So basically, it's it, the functioning. Yeah. <laughs> our our very function in this office is really AI generated. Yeah. And so and, and it's real. But what it's done is it's helped enhance our ability to be faster, quicker, 
I, you know, I hate to say this. They say demands. It doesn't. This is, artificial intelligence isn't making the isn't making your energy level even. They say like, oh, technology will make you take it easier. No, it doesn't. It never did. And that was like the thing. It was like, oh, it's going to simplify our lives. Technology. No, it's 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 more complicated than ever. Because yeah. it's like, um, you know, it's like it, the the advent of the whole technology has really just propelled you. You could you think of a lot of things and you could do a lot of things and you just kind of expand. And Carrie's probably saying yes. Anthony's changing his mind about sixty thousand things. And, <laughs> you know, but um, it's a big part of. Oh, did I just drop? Thankfully, that didn't hit the floor. Um, <laughs> It helped us propel ourselves. And I think artificial intelligence is going to shape this business. And if it hasn't shaped it for many people, it's too late. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't even tell you. I think, and if you really think about it from a year, a year ago from today, I think we've produced about 10 times what we produced in a span of a year. I... It's 10 times. Right, we've ten x our production. Yes, we have. So that's, and the thing is, is that now it's like as we, and obviously there's so many we don't use. So yes, we have uh, uh, we have a few platforms. I'm gonna get into every one, but obviously, uh, OpenAI is one of them. We we run a, we run I think it's three different uh, AI applications, including uh, video and photo processing. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. and it's insane. It's helped us tenfold. And if you haven't checked out um, some of the stuff that we've done, obviously you can look at our YouTube channel, which has grown exponentially. Yes, please. Yes, it's we want to get to two two thousand, which makes us a, a regional player. We're really happy about, it. and it's helped. It's helped not our business, and, and we want to make that clear. It's not just helped our business in the last year. It's helped our our. Um, it's helped us sellers, mm-hmm. and that's we've done studies, case studies on this. Do you get into that on this? I don't know. Uh, no, I don't. Okay, so case studies we've done. We're able to deliver more targeted marketing more than ever before, and we're able to make this a priority in not only of course not not just the efficiency of 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 creating uh, views, but an efficiency in terms of cost to do so. So when we look at these things, we want to see, okay, can we generate enough attraction for a house outside of the traditional means? And while I love these little merges between um, realtor.com and uh, we're not subject to those changes, we run our own platforms. And I think it's becoming even more evident now that our platforms now with over a million views, we don't really have to rely too much on enhancing things or doing much in the way of enhancing. Not to say that doesn't happen, but to the degree that, and because of its cost effectiveness, and that's obviously, that's a long, long question to answer because there's so many logistical things that I do behind the scenes. So if you know that I'm up at three o'clock in the morning, which you can find me, um, <laughs> I'm working on the very intricacies of the logistics of putting these things together. So it actually helps our clients succeed in driving exposure that probably would not be attainable through any other means. Yeah. So that's really where we are with that. Uh, so let's get on to the next thing. What are we going? Where are we going from here? Um, so the, I actually do have a question for you. Um, do you expect costs to rise in real estate professionals? Yeah. Yes. For professionals, yes. For professionals. Yeah, I do expect. Um, guys, the people that are in this real estate business and most homeowners kind of not a, don't appreciate what the costs are associated with doing this business, but you could expect costs costs to rise exponentially over the next year. There is no doubt in my mind that based on everything that I've seen is um, they, there will be a barrier to entry that's going to be consistent. And to a certain degree, it is already. I'm not going to tell you it's, it's, 
uh, because most there's all you know there's a lot of you know some people think that this is all going to go by the way of franchise franchises and I'm going to tell you that's not the case at all um, but uh, infrastructurally most people who are in the in the business are not capable of understanding infrastructurally what's going to be required if you don't understand infrastructurally as part of your operational costs that's going to be involved you will sink you it's a it's a heavy burden you will sink under the weight of the costs associated with doing real estate it's no doubt about it uh this is not this is not people think selling real estate is i show up to a house we put a sign on the lawn we do some marketing put it here and there I don't, I cannot tell you the logistical things that we take on as challenges as far as creating infrastructure to deliver better results. There's an infrastructure requirement that is necessary from my perspective. And I've seen it because we're one of the few companies, we're not the hugest company in the world. We've definitely expanded over the last year. But um, the one thing is we're selling houses now 70 miles from where we're located, 70 in places that people would never dream that we'd, we'd be able to go and deliver not only a better effective result in that 70 miles away from actually where we're located, just based on technology. So we've kind of hit the ground running. We've developed an infrastructure to allow us to do it, probably more so than any other, uh, I think even national brokers don't even, uh, could where, we're dominating in that in terms of viewership in areas across uh, our region. I'm not saying that's a national thing, which is something I think, I, are you getting into the hyper-local thing? Because that's the hyper-local marketing. There's hyper-local marketing that we're actually accomplishing. Um, that's a very narrow term, and I know it probably goes over people's heads, but it's happening. So if you're in the real estate business and the operational menu for the next year is not on developing infrastructure, you are going to find this to get increasingly difficult. Mm -hmm. This merges so is pointing to it. It's going to cost you more for exposure if you're relying on platforms that you're not working on. You guys, you have to build that up. If you don't, and for clients too, you need to identify for anybody, whether they're selling a house, where they're involved in the real estate business, where they're doing the business. I mean, I hear so many things online. I, our primary job as real estate agents, and I hear it's like, you know, train, train, train. Training people on paperwork is great. Our mission, mission in your listing agreement is to sell the house and we're employed to market the property. That is the chief first part of this business. But, if you cannot identify the methods of which you're going to get delivery of those services, you are going to find yourself in what I call the, these, there's, there's the store shelves, right? We go down aisles, you go down the cereal aisle, your house wants to be on a store shelf down an aisle of 60,000 boxes of cereal, maybe four or five of them the same, people walk past. You want to be on the front, the T section of the, of the, of the, shelf, of the shelf of the store. You have to be there. It drives the market for a better result. So if anybody's gone to a supermarket, it works the same way with everything. Regardless, exposure will drive results if done properly. Mm -hmm. And that's, we don't, we, you know, I think for the size of the operation we have, we do keep, obviously, uh, we do spend quite a bit on marketing here. I mean, it's it probably one, it is chiefly our biggest expense. Yeah. No. I mean, it's like we spend all our money on doing it, um, getting it right, uh, great people around it, um, including yourself. So um, if you haven't seen your tours, they could watch them on YouTube. Yeah. Tours, guys. Yes. She's become, um, she's become famous across all of our platforms. Yeah, slowly, but I swear I, I type in prodigy real estate and I'm kind of an afterthought in this whole process. But the big thing is, is um, well, the big thing is, is that you don't laugh. 
you're distracting me. Um, the big thing is, is that you, you just need to know what it's going to look like when your house is going on the market. Mm-hmm. We, we are all over the state of New Jersey. We're in Staten Island. We spend a lot of time in both places. One of the biggest chief concerns that most homeowners have is too many people come in and they sound the same. Now, that doesn't mean you've got to sell the same because not everything is the same. And the biggest thing is we try to make it educational about the process of what a sale or the sale and marketing of a house affects the bottom line of that property is key to the entire process of selling um, in real estate. So you really need to get on top of that uh, piece of it. Um, if an agent hasn't built out channels, which um, you may be getting into next, um, I don't, I have no, no idea. What you, augmented reality, re, realty, augmented reality. That is a part. We could get to that in a minute. That, I guess that's the next part of this. Yes. So I could get into it. So I could just kind of sum this up. <laughs> because this is so important to me. This is the biggest thing. This is why people hate real estate people. I'm on so many appointments and people hate. They hate the real estate business. They hate it. Why do people hate it? Because they feel like, it's, you know, we could, it seems like, you know, it's kind of like you laugh at it, but there's not because people, and the biggest disconnect I've come across is they don't know what's happening once the house goes on the market. They can't see it. They can't feel it. It doesn't seem like there's much happening. So what happens is people get disappointed with the process because it's like, okay, yes, we're on Zillow. Yes, we're on Realtor.com. And beyond that, what are, where, where are we? And my thing is, is that in, a, in an era we're in, um, if you are not able, not just to, it's not even showcasing houses anymore. We're showcasing entire neighborhoods. Because a house is two components. It's neighborhood, then house. It's awareness, which is, are you creating an, enough of an awareness of a neighborhood? So we've developed like a, a synergistic strategy to kind of like what we call a funnel system. So people understand the neighborhood and they understand the housing, then they understand what house they're going to buy. And as we create this, this, this kind of funnel to actually drive people to the specific house we're looking, we want them to look at and say, here's the benefits of living here. If you can't do that and you're not organizationally in that place, you're going to have a difficult time. This market's or you're going to pay a heck of a lot of money. Your sellers are going to demand more of it as things move forward. Um, the infrastructure requirements to kind of give you an idea of what that may look like. I mean, I, I, I would venture to say just in, just in, I think in the 10 years I've been doing this, I spent over a million dollars on this. When we look at our budgets, is wow. just in our digital marketing, a million, a million dollars has gone into. We have over 2,600 produced videos uh, over 10 years. So that's man hours, that's uploads, that's everything that's behind that. So if you, if you cost associated with developing channels, it isn't something you're going to pop off and do in a week. Some people have got, I mean, there's, there's a luck factor. There's some people definitely get lucky. But I knew this was coming. I, I saw this coming. Video to me was coming 15 years ago. I was one of the first. I used to build my, I built, you talk about drones. Yeah. I built my first. I built them before they were made. Because I said, I said, this is going to be the future at some point. And you can go back on YouTube and you can see stuff back from uh, the Hurricane Sandy when I did. Uh, I was on headline news, CNN headline news. <laughs> it was like a, back then, Jones was such a, a freakishly not that I got called from all sorts of news channels about, about the footage. But I knew that was where it was going. And I said, this is the future. And then, so I've always kind of been able to angle ourselves, which is not, some people say, oh, it's great for your company. We need, that's the next piece is, I'm not looking at it from, okay, we need to, great companies are about the consumer first. And that's what I try to look at it from the perspective. Okay, well, we get to the consumer level with their experience with this. Mm -hmm. 
and are they going to like what they see and find when they get there? That's going to make the company. It's not like, oh, okay, we're a great company. No, we're, we're, we're great for the consumer, which then makes us a better company. But it's the future. And we this, I think these last two years, I mean, obviously we have one of the top producing people in the office uh, relatively. Oh, yes. uh, uh, and basically is coming out of nowhere. And because we're able to deliver products and services that would never be able to be had otherwise. So my thing is, is that if you're in the real estate business or you're moving into the real estate business, or you're in the real estate business, your business costs, the cost of doing business, if you don't have an infrastructure set up, is going to be absolutely cost prohibitive. And unless, you know, we're fortunate and lucky here that we actually have developed channels. So it's not, it's not, so the agents don't have to come in and say, okay, well, you need to develop your own channel. Uh, and everybody loves that degree of independence. But when you talk about costs, uh, like, there are so many seminars on this and things like this, but they always say, oh, you know, do this on social media. How much can an agent do on their own and then sell real estate? You have some great people do it too. They do all this stuff. They, they do their social media. They're always, you, you become like, it's like juggling. Yeah. I juggle a lot too because I'm in both facets. I run the entire company, so it should be expected to a certain degree. But it's so many things to juggle, and people people don't appreciate like what what it takes to do that. It's just the time, the consistency that requires you to move to another level in this business. So that's where we're at with that. So you better get your ducks in a row because the the future of real estate, um, if channels aren't built out, if things aren't built out correctly. And that's not these things and rushing through this is not going to bring you better results doing things that aren't like, you know, uh, like, you know, buying subscribers and things like that no. or doing things like that. There's no quick, quick, fast approach to this. So uh, and I think if you're going to beat the whole Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia type thing, the infrastructure of the company has to be set up correctly for you to perform at a high level or else you're going to have a difficult time, period. End of story. I don't think you could, you could change this in any, if you're not set up for this, you're set up for failure. Um, and there's different levels of content. We get into that, but that's a, that may be for another time. But the big thing, I think that the big takeaway from this so far is, is that how much um, the t smart TV has taken over a big portion of um, the the real estate business uh, or or the media part of the real estate business. We're seeing TV. I'm seeing TV jump. Oh, yeah. Uh, so now everybody can say they see you on TV now, right? <laughs> okay. You can see your home tour right on TV. Okay. I mean, that's where me and my family watch them together. So. Oh, you watch it? You watch them? Yeah, we all sit around the couch and. I thought you said you hate watching it. I guess you hate watching it around me. Well, <laughs> it's different around my family. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but yeah, so it's I thought it would be more weird. Uh, actually, we got thing. It's still it's still playing. So just letting you know, Windows says. Oh, okay. Low so B. Low B. Battery. Yeah. Uh, you're not supposed to let them know that. So I said low B. Anyway, <laughs> so where are we going from here? Every every device I have is all set up for the six five nine. So we have a little bit more. God, what's next? You have another question there. You talk about augmented reality. Yes. The TikTok people always say you're looking to go home. I think I'm convinced of it now. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> the augmented reality part. I think you are to talk about. Which is uh, yes. Yeah. So, um, have you ever dealt with augmented reality? I don't think so. I think every day is like that. The, the way we live today. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what are you even talking about? No, I don't. Like, <laughs> virtual reality, I. Yeah, augmented yeah. is basically virtual. Same, okay. same basic premise. The advent. This is where things are going to get really crazy. 
is augmented reality is going to be a real game changer. I think in the next two to three years, this should be freakish to any real estate person because, I mean, it could change the dynamics of real estate quite a bit yeah. because um, I'm not going to get into the details of it because of certain uh, things that we're working on as far as augmented reality. So I, I'm not going to tell you everything, um, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a major player. Um, I have done some some processing in the augmented reality uh, space, I've done some experiments on them, um, and it's going to, I think it's going to be two to three years out before it's fully functional. There's going to be very little difference between the real world and the augmented reality, which is, you're not going to know the difference. That's so scary. Is it scary? That is scary. It's scary for you. Well, Just like probably flying on a plane is scary to someone in 1900. <laughs> that's what's scary is I guess to the people that are, are out there and they're watching like augmented reality it's it's considerable you will not know the difference from what you're watching on tv whether it's real or fake from any degree i mean obviously we're going into a very odd time and everybody hasn't seen all the memes out there created using uh just using ai and e ai imaging and yeah. ai video you see some pretty crazy stuff I know, yeah. And you see, and we're like at the very, like, very, very tip. There's a whole bunch more to go, and it's going faster and faster. So how it's going to affect the real estate business, it's going to in the next year. Um, I don't know to what degree is really the case. Uh, it's going to be quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, it'll be better for uh, out-of-town buyers. Mm-hmm. Out of town buyers, yeah, like you. <laughs> yeah. We're taking Carrie to places she's never been before. I know she's been all over the state of Jersey, and I have been. we'll be we'll be in Asbury Park this week. Um, that's an interesting place. Uh, yeah, we moved ourselves right into the into the Jer New Jersey Shore, uh, and we're doing yep. we're doing uh, a good good amount of work over there, and I think. Um, if you haven't seen our YouTube channel, you'll understand why. Um, mm -hmm. We're doing some some really interesting stuff, um, and it's it's helping our agents really. Uh, they're really accelerating their business tenfold. I've seen a few people just literally take off, um, built built it out. Yeah. Don't don't fall asleep on me yet. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not. <laughs> I'm waiting for the trolls to come in and start saying things. <laughs> Because usually, sometimes we're not always on Friday, like the few Fridays you missed. Yeah. And usually, like when it comes to the five o'clock hour, they're like, when are you going to send the home already? It's past five. She came in later today, guys. Sorry. So, yeah, I mean, this is all, yeah, this is all pretty much the, the typical stuff we do. Yeah. Um, but I just, to touch on the one thing with selling video marketing is... If you're selling a house and video marketing isn't part of the process and not just a uh, video where you just like snappy through everything and just kind of like, 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 uh, just quickly seeing, uh, a visualization mm -hmm. first is delivery, right? You want to make sure you can deliver the message to the person. That's the first thing. So delivery. Next thing is quality. Make sure quality controls are there and what that's going to do, it's going to turn your sale, forget about Zillow and Trulia. You're, it, when people are looking at Zillow and Trulia, I just want you to remember all these platforms are portals, meaning that the person has to find the house, not the house has to find the buyer. This is part of the big, big process that kind of has to be re reinvented here. Um, so you're assuming people know where they're going to look ahead of time that they're going to find and search in those places. So what I'm trying to tell you is that's not the case. You have to be able to let them understand way in advance where their options are, what it's like living there, and then the delivery. And this can't be done just through a map and finding dots on a screen and saying, this is where to move. We have people that move from across the country uh, to these places. 
I think one of the things that we're seeing is, is that the educational part is profound and it needs to be directed toward an individual who's looking for certain aspects of a town or a community that would not have not, yes, you could read about it. The difference between reading about it and experiencing it, most of the people we found who are now searching, like in New Jersey, they usually run through the towns prior to going into the neighborhood to go look at a house. So meaning they don't know enough about the town, so they go to YouTube to find it, or even TikTok to a certain degree, uh, which are very searchable, we call them search-ready platforms. It's not so much, you don't get that on Instagram as much. They're more search related to what people are kind of finding. So if you really want to know about a place, you're more likely to go to YouTube first if you're like going on vacation somewhere. Yeah. And you want to know about that place, what are you going to do? Search it up. Search it up on, yeah, you know, you're looking on it. But you will, most people will do that in depth. You want to experience the area. So you want video. Yeah. I mean, that's the main thing. Yeah. Yep. So do you buy clothes? Uh, so since you're, you're a fashion junkie, do you prefer? Do you prefer to put? Do you buy influence? How much do you think your clothing is influenced by something you've seen on a TV show or a video? Uh, I mean, I keep up with the trends. And how do you do that? Uh, I guess TikTok. There you go. <laughs> Proof right there. That shows you the whole metric of how people search. Yeah. TikTok. TikTok. Uh, or one of these other platforms are going to direct you to where you need to go. But um, as far as your purchase, and that the same thing goes for house. So people want to bend the idea that it's somehow different. It isn't. So that's where we're going to leave that at. But I think that's uh, that's pretty much where we're going into the new year. Um, I expect uh, we'll be... <laughs> I'm going to leave some things on her screen. <laughs> <laughs> and this is... <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, very Halloween-like. Yes, it is. It's a skull and crossbones. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, that's where we're going to... Oh, what is that? Oh, Wow, oh, I got this. The pub. I don't even know what the heck that is. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, you need to get ahead of this, and we'll we'll be getting ahead of it for you. Uh, in the next few months, you'll be hearing more about what we're doing and offering up as far as the next generation of real estate. But I do think the world of real estate has changed, and will continue to change at a faster pace this year than last year by far. It's accelerating very quickly. I think this move, I think the next year and a half, we're going to see the most substantial changes in this business. And if you're not prepared for them, you better start having conversations with people who know what they're doing. Because if you don't, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to, and it's going to get very, very expensive. And the, because my thing is, is that if you have to pay for your exposure, and the more people that need to pay for it, the more you need their platform, the more you need their stuff, the more likely it's going to cost you. And I keep telling people this all the time. You have to build out infrastructure to work uh, for, your, for your business. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. I, I just, not much is spent there. But that's what we have for tonight. It's Friday night, guys. It is an absolutely gorgeous evening. Yeah. It's been a gorgeous week here in New York City. Um, 80 degrees plus. Is it how? No, that's next weekend. Yeah, I think people are celebrating Halloween this weekend. Yeah? Yeah. Yuck. I'm not a Halloween person. No? No, not at all. I never liked Halloween. I love Halloween. I know you do. All <laughs> girls love Halloween. What girl do I don't don't know? That's why you always go to a... You, don't you always go to the party and it's like all the girls are dressed up and all the guys are just in yeah. jeans and t-shirt? Yeah, just like a t-shirt. They have like a, it says like, Yankees. What are you? Like, oh. <laughs> are you? <laughs> yeah.
I think one time I, I had to wear my father in law's Con Ed out, uh, outfit. A what? My father in law's Con Edison. Oh, that's Paul. funny. He used to work for Con Edison. That's funny, yeah. So he had an old guys. one. Um, and I had a, I came as a Con Ed person. We needed something fast. Yeah. I wasn't going to be allowed into, into the party no, without that's it. That's funny, yeah. It's so simple for them. Easy it, for them. It's not, you guys make it the way it is. It's your, that's your thing. It's your thing. It's not, it, we make it simple because it is simple. You guys make it complicated. That's how most. I don't want to say it. I'm gonna get in trouble. We're gonna get disbarred from here, from from, from social media. When do you not make things complicated? <laughs> All years. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I know it takes a long time to get ready. Well, the costume requires that. If you're gonna wear all that stuff. Yeah, it does take a long time. <laughs> yeah, you gotta color coordinate. If you're something yellow, you need to be yellow. And you yeah. need to buy special yellow stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and That's yellow enhanced and some yeah. yellow eyeliner or yellow <laughs> whatever it may be. No, if you're it's right. yellow. <laughs> the theme is yellow, you're yellow. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hopefully um, you find a little bit of entertainment in there. <laughs> That's what we have for you tonight, guys. It's Friday. Enjoy your evening. Um, I'm off to football, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. And then, yeah, it's going to be two weeks because we're not going to have no stats for a couple. Oh, she's just loving it. No. <laughs> but anyway, that's where we are. I hope to see you soon. Um, and uh, stay tuned. We'll have some more for you coming up. Yep. Come on out of that seat.